Hi, and welcome back to Learn Neuroradiology. I'm Brent Weinberg. For this second part of the vascular imaging lecture, Dr. Wu is going to go through some of the vascular pathology you might see on imaging of the brain and neck. If you haven't seen the videos about general overview of vascular imaging, as well as the vascular imaging search pattern, please go back and check those out. Uh, you may enjoy those, and uh, then welcome. And without further ado, we'll move right to Dr. Wu. All right. So now we're going to, now that we've looked at normal, we're now going to talk a little bit about what kind of pathologies that you might actually see, right? And we started looking at, referring to some of this a little earlier, but um, the main things that we're going to see are going to be aneurysms, thrombus, dissection, or vascular malformation. This is obviously not an exhaustive list, but we're focusing on the most common vascular abnormalities that you could see in the head and neck. So Aneurysms are basically just abnormal outpouchings of the vessel. They can be covered by all layers of the vessel. So that's a true aneurysm, right? So you can have these congenital aneurysms, developmental aneurysms, or aneurysms that result from uh, hypertension, right? If that blood is balancing against the wall um, the whole time, you might, um, you might see that uh, happen. Uh, forming an aneurysm that way. And then, or you can have uh, an aneurysm that's covered by some of, only some of the layers of the vessel, and that's known as a pseudoaneurysm. And that happens in the setting of trauma or infection, right? So one layer of the vessel has been dissected through by blood, but then it's still contained by um, the outer layers in general of the vessel. There are two forms that you might see. You can see a saccular aneurysm. So that's what we typically call these berry aneurysms also. Um, they they arise from one of the walls of the vessel and then they kind of pooch out just like that. Or you can have a fusiform aneurysm where the entire vessel is kind of dilated, um, like all the walls are stretched out in, in this more symmetric way. Of course, the issue with aneurysms is that they can rupture or hemorrhage. And this will usually give you a subarachnoid hemorrhage intracranially, um, but when the force of the blood is high enough, it can actually dissect into the brain parenchyma or even the ventricles. So um, I don't know if any of y'all are uh, Game of Thrones fans, but actually Emilia Clark has um, had issues or has had personal um, uh, experience with aneurysms, and she writes about it eloquently um, in this uh, in this article. I believe it was in the New Yorker, where she talks about it. A, a very um, intriguing story that she was filming the first season of Game of Thrones, and then had two aneurysms, uh, and I think one of them at least ruptured on her. So a fascinating read. Um, so what does it look like? This is one of the cases that we were looking at earlier. You have all this high density on non-contrast head CT um, in the supracellar cisterns and going into the sylvian fissures, interhemisphere fissures, and ambient cisterns. And you, if you have eagle eyes, you might see that there is some low density in the midst of all this blood, right? So all this bright stuff is acute blood, and you might be wondering, what is that dark thing? Well, that dark thing in the middle is actually the aneurysm. Right, so when I gave, when we gave some contrast to this patient for the CTA, oh, excuse me, this room thinks that I'm gone. Um, what, you can see that this aneurysm then lights up this outpouching, right? So here is actually the basilar artery. This is a coronal reformat of the CTA. And you can see that here's the basilar artery coming up and off of it, a very abnormal outpouching, saccular outpouching um, that forms this aneurysm. And this is the, the subarachnoid hemorrhage is the result of the rupture of this aneurysm. You can do a fancy 3D reconstruction that shows that here again is a basilar artery. You can see how this aneurysm is coming in basically in between the takeoff of the PCA, the posterior cerebral artery, and the um, superior cerebellar artery, that CA over here. It's kind of right in between those two. And it's very irregularly shaped as aneurysms that rupture tend to be. And this is an example of a saccular basilar chip aneurysm that has ruptured. All right, so shifting gears to thrombus. So we were talking about um, the idea of uh, people getting uh, ischemic strokes. And of course, arterial thrombus um, is one of the most common causes for uh, our ischemic strokes. 
And um, in this case, what it'll look like is it's going to be an abrupt cutoff or a severe narrowing of all the vessels distal to a point. So on this image, you can see that um, this is a coronal MIP, a coronal maximum intensity projection uh, of a CTA. And if you remember um, Dr. Weinberg going over that anatomy, you have the distal uh, internal carotid artery coming up and then it's branching off into the MCA on this side and then the ACA and that's normal. And over here, I'm kind of, you're seeing a little bit of the distal internal carotid over here and I'm seeing the ACA, but the MCA looks like it's maybe really, really narrowed there. And then it, then it looks like it's gone over here, right? So you see a very significant narrowing and then it's cut off. And then if you don't like the axial, if you don't like the coronal reformats, here's an axial reformat. And you can see it, same thing, MCA going off on this side, that M1 branch, right? And over here, I really just notice a cutoff at my M1, right? And all the vessels distal to it, if you don't, if you didn't identify this, maybe if you, at least if you just squint and you can see how there's an asymmetry between how many vessels are out here compared to this side and how many vessels that are out here compared to this side. And that should definitely increase your suspicion that there's a cutoff more proximally if you see that there's decreased distal opacification. Okay. Um, uh, so that's an arterial thrombus. What about a venous thrombus? They look a little bit different. They often look like a filling defect within, within an expected venous structure. So what I have here are actually post-contrast MR images rather than CT images. But the first one is actually normal. I just wanted to show you that over here, you have the confluence of the internal cerebral veins into the vein of Galen. And on this post-contrast image, it should light up nicely with contrast, right? However, in this patient that has a thrombus, you can see how there's a dark filling defect in that area. And on this axial, another axial image at a different level in the posterior fossa, you can see these are your transverse dural venous sinuses. And then you can actually see a little filling defect in that um, junction between the transverse and the sigmoid dural venous sinus. So again, that's the normal, that's the abnormal, and here's another thrombus, okay? All right, what does a dissection look like? So a dissection is basically a tear within the intimal arterial lining, and then the blood starts to dissect inward uh, beyond the intima into the media uh, of the arterial wall, right? And so then you, as the blood dissects and makes that area, that uh, false lumen bigger, you can actually see it forming a false lumen as well as a dissection flap within the vessel. So that's kind of what you're going to look for. You're going to see an intimal flap when you're looking at a big enough vessel, right? So here we're looking at the aorta again, essentially our biggest vessel that we have, uh, our biggest arterial vessel that we have. And then you can see that in here you have a flap. So that's actually the intima being torn off from the arterial wall. And then you have the contrast dissecting from the true lumen over here into the false lumen. Um, sometimes it's not going to look as pretty within a smaller vessel. All you're going to see is an, uh, basically either narrowing or occlusion of the lumen of the vessel. So on this image, the normal lumen you can see on the left of a vertebral artery. Again, this is in those transverse foramen, right? So this vertebral artery looks normal um, on this side, but on the right, you see that the lumen is fairly narrowed. And then there is this T1 hyperintense wall all around it. Right, so that's actually what's known as an intramural hematoma. So when the blood dissects into that false lumen, it can then kind of clot off and form an intramural hematoma um, that's narrowing the lumen itself. So again, the flap you can't see here because it's such a small vessel, but it's basically between this true lumen and then that hematoma is where that dissection flap is going to be. Um, sometimes if you're looking at a CTA, you might just see a long segment area of luminal narrowing or even irregular en enlargement. So what's happening here is if you're following this normal side, you see the internal carotid artery coming up, right? And then goes into the brain. And then here it gives off MCA and ACA. On the other side, you also have the internal carotid artery coming up and suddenly, wait, what? There's this big out pouching, right? So there's irregular enlargement of the vessel and then followed by this very, very thin, long segment narrowing 
um, of the internal carotid artery. So what's happening over here? You have a pseudo aneurysm um, at this um, at this portion of the internal carotid artery that's still in the neck where it's certainly prone to injury, right? And then followed by an area of arterial dissection so that you're only seeing the true lumen opacified by opacified by contrast, what you're not seeing is all this else, all the clot and the false lumen outside of it, right? So this is often, again, sequela of trauma. Um, so the trauma makes a tear in the in, in that intimal wall. And then that's what results in the both the pseudo uh, aneurysm as well as the dissection. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that actually our uh, ac acute vertebral artery dissection um, is actually the more common cause uh, for a vertebral artery occlusion um, than an embolus. So um, these are small vessels. Um, if you kind of see them in isolation, if you see like a posterior fossa infarct in isolation, you have to think about vertebral artery dissection as potentially one of the causes um, rather than just throwing a thrombus. All right, last but not least, uh, we got arterial venous malformations. So these are going to be abnormal clusters of vessels that are directly connecting arteries and veins. So normally we have our arteries, right? They get smaller, smaller, smaller until you get to the capillary bed and then they drain into your venous drainage system, right? So an AVM basically skips that capillary bed and you have a direct communication between your arterial branches and your veins. And what happens is um, because of that increased uh, flow through that AVM, you're going to have enlargement of the both the feeding arteries as well as the draining veins, right? The the that makes sense because if you have if you're if this area requires a lot of blood flow, that artery is going to dilate and support that area. And then the veins, of course, under all that pressure is also going to be enlarged. Um, AVMs can cause spontaneous hemorrhage or seizure, and they're uh, graded based on the Spessler Martin grade, which takes into account uh, drainage pattern, whether or not it affects eloquent uh, cortex of the brain or not, um, as well as their size to predict uh, the surgical outcome of trying to resect it surgically. So what I'm showing here is a, here's a coronal MIP reconstruction of a CTA, and you see this very abnormal kind of serpiginous cluster of vessels um, that's known as the AVM nidus over here in the uh, in the parietal lobe, I believe, and you can see that it's actually being fed by the right MCA branches, which are very enlarged. These are not the normal caliber; they look almost as big as the M1 all the way out here, right? As well as the right ACA branches, which are also enlarged. So this is a traditional or this is a conventional DSA angiogram. So they're injecting the internal carotid artery and you can clearly see uh, these enlarged vessels feeding this, um, this AVM. Okay. All right, so now it's time to try our hand at being a radiologist. Um, and so we have that link again um, at VAS, the, the Learn Your Radiology uh, Vascular Capstone. So you can go on there and then access the cases. With that, I'd just like to thank Dr. Wu for this great presentation and for joining us today. Here you have the link. Uh, you can go to this website and check out the cases, browse them yourself. There's also video explanations of those cases, which can help walk you through them. If you like the video, be sure to hit the like button down at the bottom and uh, be sure to subscribe and check out the rest of the videos on our Learner Radiology channel. Thank you.